it's been just fantastic. Leaving uh, Beloit and with all of the recognition we were getting leaving there, that my first flashback was to the last rice paddy I was standing in in Vietnam in 1968. I did two nine-month tours in Vietnam, which I consider the worst years of my naval service. You know, coming out was the other end of the spectrum of my feelings leaving Vietnam, not knowing, you know, whether they're going to throw eggs or rotten tomatoes or whatever, or whatever they were throwing at that time, you know. But this is tremendous. Veterans, especially in my, from my era, really appreciate something like this. joined the Marine Corps when I was 17. Uh, I was in Korea when I was 18. I had six months combat pay before I was 19. Uh, I guess I joined the Marine Corps to, what could I say, I was looking for excitement and uh, I found it. Uh, maybe a little more than I wanted. <laughs> Vets' role is giving me an opportunity to gather together with other veterans and to experience again our service to our country. It's for people to know uh, that our veterans put their lives on the line day after day so that we could be at peace. And that's really what being a veteran is all about. of people and how organized they were, as well as the, the kids, uh, the grown-ups, uh, the fire department, the police departments, uh, all the folks that are on the side of the road and on, in the overpasses that are giving us uh, honor, uh, really never had that. I'm looking forward. I've never been to Washington. I'm looking very much forward to being there and seeing all the monuments, Arlington National Park, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, 
It's got to be a fantastic site. It's our national capital, and I'm anxious to see it. Look at the traffic to the right, guys. It's all for you guys. Well, I was on guard duty and was walking post, was probably within 15 minutes of being relieved, and a separate team of North Vietnamese regulars hit the base. And they came in with satchel charges and automatic weapons and started doing a lot of destruction. And I had, was on the last post at the end of our lineup of aircraft on there. So I ended up spending the rest of the night hiding between the barrels next to the aircraft to make sure that nobody else that wasn't supposed to be there came in on that end. So by the time sunlight came and people started moving around, I was absolutely a nervous wreck. <laughs> laying there awake all night trying to figure out, you know, if, was I the only one left? <laughs> I was in Europe and uh, crossed into Normandy about a week or 10 days after the initial invasion. I, I think I was probably 21, which was kind of old. You know, there were so many little boys that were in there, and they didn't know how to handle things, you know. It was just, just, just a couple of years of a little more experience made a big change right at that age. giving up three years of my life and never got to leave. I left in you know, January of 43 and go home in January of 46. The real heroes are the ones that didn't come back. Well, they're the ones that really, I guess that's what we recognize now.
Everyone that was in the military, I'm sure, can share this story, but especially those of you deployed around the world, there's probably nothing more important than getting those letters from home. Tonight, in just a second, we are distributing over 10,000 letters and cards for your final mail call. And it's a way to thank you for your service to this nation. Harold Bandemer! Yes! This has really been a wonderful experience and an adventure. And one of my highlights is meeting my roommate. We've been together now for three days, and you'd think that we would known each other half of our life. We enlisted together back in 55. He went to Korea and I got shipped to Fort Benny, Georgia. Lost track of him. Having to recognize his name on mail call, talking to the helpers of his bus, and he's out hunting for me. Well, I turned around, and he's standing there looking at me. You know? <laughs> After 63 years, we don't look the same as we did then. <laughs> I can't believe the policemen and the firemen are all up on the bridges saluting us and everything when we go by. It's just truly unbelievable. Truly unbelievable. As a veteran, all I wanted was someone to say thank you. I did not expect them to come out and honor me. I don't deserve it, but I appreciate it beyond belief. Nobody told me how emotional this was going to be. Nobody told me how many people I'm going to become friends with. This is an awesome experience. Absolutely awesome. Oh, awesome. I never got a homecoming like this when I got home from Korea. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Not like this. the cruises we had a little little fun on a couple of the two week cruises we uh, played a few tricks on some of the youngsters you know so we said well you can wash your trousers and stuff just uh, put a rope on them and put them over the fan tail and dra drag them in the sea and so they would do that but then the salt water would turn them so that the first time they hit hit the, it's, they ripped apart <laughs> I remember I was on an airplane, the engine went out and they had a, told us a parachute and jump out and find a, a life raft in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> and then another thing I remember, on board ship we had a typhoon and uh, we went through a typhoon aboard ship and I was being transferred. That was quite a deal. I ran 
Ryan and the fella I went in the Marine, joined the Marine Corps with, he's on the trip with us. And I didn't even know he was going. I haven't seen him probably in 50 years. He, I don't know, did you see my tag or just recognize me? No. Your what? Did you see this? No. Or you I just read to me. I just recognized you. He just say, he walked up and said, Glenn Davidson. Yeah. He's, got I, that, he's got that D.I. haircut. That's what he's telling me. Right? <laughs> I heard he died once. Did you know that? Huh? I heard that you died. He what? You died. Oh, no, I didn't die. I can see that. <laughs> yeah.